Here comes Scarfo with a head of steam. Fires one on high over Harmon. To the line, it's long. One-timer, Vescio got blocked by Ryan Cranford. Cranford's on it. He's going to try to walk in all alone. He does to the backhand. He scores! Hello, Glads fans, and welcome back to the Atlanta Gladiators podcast. My name is Liam Godmer. I am your host and the director of broadcasting and communications for the club. Today, I'm joined by that guy who just scored that backhand beauty, Ryan Cranford. Ryan, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So, Ryan, talk to me about the offseason so far. How have things been going for you, and what have you been up to? Uh, it's been a pretty good offseason so far. Uh, don't have much to, too much to complain about. Um, you know, a little, little longer than expected, but um, no, I'm enjoying it. I was, uh, after the season was done, I moved back to, uh, to Newfoundland. So I was out there for a few months, uh, had a little trip over in Europe for a couple of weeks, and then uh, back to Newfoundland, stayed, uh, stayed in shape, training, working out on the ice, uh, you know, just really looking forward to, uh, to getting this year started. It's cool. You went on vacation in Europe. Where did you go specifically? Uh, I was over in the UK for a little bit, um, spent some time there, and then uh, made our way over to Austria for, for a little bit. Oh, that's awesome. Traveling man, love to see it. Yeah. So, Craig, talk to me about last season. Uh, how would how would you assess your first pro year? So. Uh, I enjoyed it. I had, uh, you know, I, coming in first year pro, I would, didn't really know what to expect. But uh, as soon as I got there, coaching staff, everyone was very welcoming. Um, and then, uh, you know, as the season went on, I really – started to to really love Atlanta and you know the organization and everything that came along with it uh the fans the arena everything like that um obviously we got off to a really good start last year um and then you know struggled throughout the year after that but um I think it was a really good um growing year for me um I really enjoyed you know my first year being in in Atlanta um yeah so I think you know as a whole I really enjoyed the year it's a perfect segue to my next question. Uh, last season at the beginning, uh, of course, the club starts 8-0-0. That's the most consecutive wins that the Gladiators have ever had uh, in franchise history to begin a season without a loss. What was it like as a first-year player going through such a hot run like that right off the jump? Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. I mean, um, we were just showing up to, to every game, and winning those eight games straight was awesome. I mean, it was, it was a fun feeling. Um, you know, we kind of felt unstoppable, un, unstoppable at that point. Um, but you know, it it was it was good to experience that. But uh, you know, obviously, every year you go through highs and lows. So um, hopefully, we can keep the winning more consistent this year. For sure. Not only were you a first year pro last year, but you played under a first year head coach uh, in Derek Nesbitt. What was it like playing under Nezzy in year one? It was great. I mean. Uh, Nezzy's obviously he's got a lot of experience playing hockey. Um, he's a very knowledgeable guy. He knows a lot of a lot of stuff about, uh, about a lot of stuff about the game. So, I mean, he's an easy guy to talk to, um, especially for me coming in as a first year pro. Um, it was easy for me to kind of lean on him and ask some questions, and for him to give me some pointers and stuff like that. So, um, I'm really looking forward to you know me being a second year um, player and him being a second year coach. And what were the conversations like between you and Nezzy uh, after the regular season had concluded this offseason? It was good. I mean, um, we just kind of briefly talked about the year, about um, uh, my season personally, and then, you know, some stuff about um, maybe some stuff that we could, I can improve on throughout the, the summer and uh, just, you know, really looking at uh, things I can work on for this upcoming year. At the beginning of the podcast, I played uh, a backhand beauty from you uh, against the Savannah Ghost Pirates in the Battle of Georgia. I'm wondering, is there one goal from last season that stands out as most memorable to you? Um, yeah, that one would probably stand out. Um, that one that one felt pretty good. Um, but, I mean, I feel like I got to go with uh, my first pro goal um, in South Carolina. Now the front score! Ryan Cranford! To get that one out of the way was awesome, and uh, it's one that I'll never forget. So, yeah. Was that Marshy who fed you there in front of the net in Soco? Yeah, exactly. I remember that one. That was a good yeah, one. Yeah. Um, so on the note of Marshy, uh, he and Jackson Pearson, of course, also uh, re-up with the Gladiators for a year or two. What kind of camaraderie were you able to create with those two guys? Uh, of course, all three of you being in the same position at the start of the year. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, I got uh, pretty close with both those guys throughout last year and seeing them come back for another year is really exciting. Um and I think, you know, kind of they're in the same position as me where they were both 
first year guys last year and um we kind of had a, have a lot of room to grow especially coming in as a second year so i'm really excited for for both those guys to be coming back as well earlier this offseason the gladiators bring in uh the eihl coach of the year for 2023-24 as an assistant of course former gladiator goaltender matt ginn have you had any conversations with matt what was your knowledge of him uh prior uh, to him joining the glads yeah i spoke with him a little bit over text um when uh, when we were made aware that he uh, had signed as an, as an assistant coach, um, yeah, it seems like a, a great addition for uh, for us. Um, you know, um, obviously Nezzy being our, our head coach is is great, but um, obviously having uh, a guy guy like that with uh, some great experience, um, having both those guys as, as your coaches is uh, something that you you really look forward to as a player. Of course, Ryan, the Gladiators were a really young team uh, all throughout last year. But on the topic of assistant coach, Eric Neely, who was an assistant coach last year, comes out of retirement and is going to join the forward group uh, for this upcoming season. How big of a boost is that uh, to what is going to be another young group of players to have a veteran player uh, like Niels back in the locker room? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it was great having Niels around last year as an assistant coach. Um, I never got the chance to play with him. Um, just him have him as uh, as my coach last year, but I mean you can tell day in and day out that he's still still a player, and uh, I mean I'm I'm really excited for him to be able to uh, to put on the jersey every night again. And it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome, especially for um, us younger guys. You know, first second year guys coming into the league, having uh, a guy who's you know a veteran in the league and knows uh, how to navigate his way throughout you know throughout the season. So it's gonna be. It's going to be great to have him along, along for the ride this year. For sure. Cranny, the uh, South Division is widely known as one of the best, if not the best, division in the entire ECHL. Just what did you learn playing tough teams night in and night out and uh, really forcing your best uh, when you go head-to-head -head against them? Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. You can uh, you can never take a night off uh, playing in, that, in this division. Um, you know, there's uh, so many great teams obviously in this division, um, you know, with Florida winning again this year, it just yeah. goes to show that, uh, you know, it's pretty tough to, to compete in, in, in this division, but um, I mean, that's what, that's what I love about it. Uh, the competition is great. Um, like I said, you just, you always got to be on your game night in and night out. Any team that you're uh, looking forward to playing most uh, to start the 24, 25 season in the um, division? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I really like playing every team in our division. There's uh I wouldn't say there was there's one team that uh, stands out the most, but um, I always liked our road trips going down to Savannah, um, and I you know um, felt like they're a pretty good team to play against. Uh, but yeah, again, like Florida is another great team. Obviously, um, like I said, them winning last year, it's always a great competition between us and them. So yeah. Cool. You'll be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, former teammate Reese Vitelli uh, next year, who recently uh, signed in Savannah, so that'll be fun. Uh, one fun question for me, Cranny, before we get on to uh, some fan questions. I'm curious, do you have any pregame superstitions that you uh, that you like to follow? Uh, I wouldn't say um, I do anything too crazy. Um, I kind of prepare the same way um, before every game, kind of do the same warm-up. Um, like to play some sewer ball with the guys before the game. But uh, I wouldn't say I'm doing anything too outrageous before the game. Um, just like to have a good meal, get a good stretch in, and uh, get focused for the game. What's the ideal pregame meal for Ryan Cranford? Uh, it's typically chicken and rice usually before every game, yeah. Simple man. I love it. All right. So let's get on to some fan questions here and we'll start off on Instagram. Uh, the impact 99 asks, do you guys practice your fighting skills? Of course, no Spencer Kennedy this year. So, you know, maybe you'll take a little bit off, but uh, do you guys compare notes on how to handle opposing players, uh, you know, who might want to drop the gloves uh, that you'll be facing that night? Yeah. I mean, you always, especially, you know, once you're going throughout the, uh, the season, you kind of become aware of certain guys and certain teams and, you know, more guys are prone to uh, to be fighters than than others. So you kind of always want to check in to see some different kind of strategies, I guess, that uh, they, they do more more so than other guys. Um, so I wouldn't say that we have full on practices where we're practicing fighting. But I mean, especially when you play with guys who, who do it more more than others, they, you know, try to take some tips from them and stuff like that. So. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Janine on Facebook, she asks, what's your favorite thing? about Atlanta 
uh, that you were able to do uh, in your first year here? Favorite thing. Um, you know, we, uh, we were able to golf, uh, pretty often while we were there. Um, we, uh, we were lucky enough to, uh, to get a membership down, down near we, where we live there. Um, so, I mean, being able to golf uh, on our off days was pretty awesome. Um, yeah. And, uh, obviously barebone, uh, the steakhouse is a pretty great spot to go to. So, yeah. Cranny, who's the best and worst golfer on the glads last year? Oh boy. Um, I'd say probably, probably Looser was the best golfer um, okay. last year. Um, worst golfer, I'm not not too sure. Uh, I don't know if I can put anybody in the worst category. Um, who, who needs to improve their golf game? How about that? I could I could throw myself under the bus and say I, I can improve my golf game quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, Colleen also on Facebook asks, uh, being from Newfoundland, uh, Canada, where is the best spot for fish and chips? Fish and chips. Um, I mean, being out there, it's pretty great because uh, you can go out and catch some some codfish pretty fresh and then cook it up uh, right away that same day. But I'd say probably Chess's, Chess's Fish and Chips is always a good spot to go to when you're in St. John's. So, yeah. Okay. If you want something done right, do it yourself, right? Yeah. Um, so Tina asks on Facebook, where was your favorite hike that you took this summer? You a big hiker? Uh, yeah, I did a few. Um, when I was out in Newfoundland, we were out on the West Coast and uh, uh, we hiked up Grossmore Mountain. Um, it's a beautiful spot out there. Uh, it's about a 16 kilometer hike round trip. So uh, it wasn't an easy one, but uh, it's beautiful uh, once you get to the top. Sounds like a challenge for sure. And yeah. our last fan question, just moving over to X now. Uh, Nate asks, what's your favorite genre of music? And I got a follow up for you after. So favorite genre? I don't know. It depends. I, I'm I kind of like all genres of music. Um, I'd say one genre that I probably listen to the most is probably country. Um, I like some some rock music. Um, yeah, I'd say probably country is one that I listen to the most, though, probably especially throughout the summer. So picture it now, Cranny. You're at Gas South Arena. You're about to head out there for a big game. You got your headphones in. What are you listening to? What song is it? There has to be one that you, is just your go-to. Uh, I'm probably throwing on something ACDC. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe Hell's Bells. Get me going before going out there uh, for a big game. All right. I'm going to write it down. Let's get Hell's Bells up there <laughs> uh, as, as a music choice before the game. Uh, final question for me, Ryan. Uh, what's one thing that fans wouldn't know about you by watching the Atlanta God Eaters podcast? Any fun hobbies? Uh, I mean, you do pretty. I wouldn't say I do anything too uh, too special other than you know playing hockey. But uh, no, especially like this past summer, like I said, I like going uh, doing a lot of outdoorsy things. Um, especially being from Newfoundland, going out and cod fishing is something that I love to do. Um, going on some some nice hikes and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I'd say just you know kind of being an outdoorsy kind of guy. Um, Ryan Cranford, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Atlanta Gladiators podcast. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for having me.